So I know I said I was going to release the uh, chapter eight of the nature of software last Friday, and then I thought better of it um, because I was going to be away all weekend, and if there was like any trouble with it, I wanted to actually like be there for that. So I'm going to ship that out today. But uh, Eclipse, how crazy was that? I don't know if, uh, if you were not in the path of totality, you're definitely missed out. I uh, saw the Eclipse in 2017, but I was in Vancouver, and so it was like 90-something percent, and it was still pretty nutty, but because um, I don't think I'd ever experienced one before that. But after Monday, I can definitely attest uh, that I understand why people uh, travel to go and see them. And, you know, it's a two-hour event um, on either side with three minutes in the middle of, of totality. But, like, holy cow, that was, that was crazy. Um, I would actually consider traveling, but apparently... Um, you know, the next one or something is in Greenland, and I think I would limit myself to one flight. <laughs> I can get to Reykjavik uh, uh, in one flight, but I can't get to uh, I can't get to Greenland in one flight. So I've been I've been thinking about the significance of Intertwingler, like why I made it, why it's it needed to be made. Um, and what's important about it and the problems that I've been trying to solve and the sort of resolution I have. I mean, and I've been talking to, uh, about this over the last like few videos um, to the extent that a problem that's sort of perennial with information resources, when I was talking about load-bearing information and load-bearing information resources, and, and by load-bearing, I mean you re people are, are depending on it one way or another. And, you know, information is the content, and information can be at arbitrarily many locations, but an information resource is that particular, one particular location, you know, where the information is. And I'm sort of inspired, there's a Rich Hakey keynote where he's going off about the value of values and how he's like, you know, a fact is a place. And of course he's talking erroneously on purpose. A fact is not a place, a fact is content. Or at least, you know, the the information resulting from the fact is a content. A fact is a thing that happened, and so on and so forth. But the main problem of information resources when we copy them is to, uh, the, the problem is that they fall out of sync after that. So you've got the, the connection between these things, if you've got a document and uh, the document contains a fact, and then uh, you know you make claims about it, and there's no superseding fact that changes the state of affairs, uh, then it's fine. But if you if there is a superseding fact that changes the state of affairs and changes the you know the actual argument, then the problem is that that document is no longer valid or at least but but the document may still be valid like 99% of the document is valid but the thing that rests on that one fact and the, and its state being a certain in a certain state is no longer good and so but what that does is that compromises the entire document and you know, a document is an information resource. Uh, you know, you go and you get a book, and you, you know, here's a book on my desk, you know, and you read the book, 
and you find that uh, uh, you know there's facts on the ground of change or not change. Sorry, facts don't change. Facts are just facts. They stay facts. The the fact happened and that made the state of affairs be a certain state and now it is some other state and so on so the 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 goal um was to think about like okay what if can we can we make durable information resources that are just you could just have one fact as a resource and you could aggregate them so that you say it would say okay well tell me the current state of this assertion just as a for instance and the current state will always be the current state and you would you know anytime the state changes anytime new facts come in you can you know, wind up back the clock and say, okay, well, what was the state of affairs at this date and time? Um, but in order to do that, you need a whole crap load more information resources. You need like a whole wackadoo of them. And the problem with the web, the web is, you know, hypertext transfer protocol. It's for transferring content around the network. It uses URIs, URLs in particular, um, to do it, and then there has to be a durable relationship between the URL and the content, and that's what the resource more or less is. And you know, the problem is, is that that the web does not. I mean, it, it could, but you know, it typically does not uh, uh, enforce that durability. Uh, you need extra stuff to to sort of retrofit it, and that's what Intertwangler does. And so, um, this week has been a very short, weird mop-up week. Um, I didn't get back uh, from Eclipse time uh, until late on uh, Wednesday night, um, and yesterday was mop-up, and so today is still my. And I woke up at three forty-five in the morning. Uh, apparently, I have a cold now, um, which is wonderful. I've already this is my second cold of the year after four freaking years of nothing. Still no COVID, bizarrely. But anyway, so um, yeah, gonna release Nature Software. Gonna noodle on the uh, on Intertwangler probably next week. It's the the caching. Um, which is going to be the, the, the fun time. We're going to have to overhaul the content addressable store for that. And uh, anyway, I'm sick, so I'm going to go back to bed. Um, and, but first, I'm going to finish my coffee.